Thank you for your introduction. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this. Okay, uh, symposium. So uh, today I'd like to talk about the 3-5 silicon heterojunctions for steep sub-threshold slope transistors. So here's the contents of my uh, presentation. First, I'd like to talk about the background and the formation of 3-5 nanowire channels on silicon by selective area epitaxy. And then I will demonstrate the steep slope transistors using 3-5 nanowire silicon heterojunctions. And finally, I summarize my talk. So as you know, the primary concern for future nanoelectronic circuit is lower the power consumptions. Uh, so in order to do that, we have to decrease the VDD of the transistors. So now the silicon CMOS technologies are expected to change their gate and architectures and the channel material and the transport mechanism. So in order to reduce the VDD, we have to replace the gate architecture from the FinFET to our gate over around uh, by using the 3.5 channels or germanium. So or this is because the operation power of the LSI is proportional to the square of the supply voltage. And the supply voltage is uh, eventually determined by the difference between the on-state current and the off-state leakage current. That's why we are focusing on the FinFET or surrounding gate architectures to reduce our uh, off-state leakage current. And while uh, we, uh, we are, are investigating the 3.5 material and the germanium uh, because, uh, in order to enhance on-state current under the low bias. So this, uh, because these materials has a higher electron or hole mobilities, so several teams have reported the uh, fabrication of the 3.5 nanowire uh, channel-based uh, 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 multi-gate architectures as shown here. So how, uh, also we, uh, we used our 3.5 channels as a multi-gate architectures. Uh, the future power scaling uh, will be stopped by the carrier uh, physical limitations in the sub-threshold slope. Uh, usually the MOSFET uses a, a carrier thermal diffusion. This diffusion mechanism uh, limits the sub-threshold slope to 60 millivolts over decade at room temperatures. So in order to create a 0.5 volt operations and the silicon CMOS compatibilities, uh, we have to uh, create uh, at least the sub-30 millivolts over decade is required for the such a uh, low voltage transistors. So or up to now, uh, several uh, steep slope transistors have been reported, uh, such as tunnel FETs, impact ionization FETs, and uh, mechanical switches. So among them, the TFET is a, a good candidate because this arc, uh, structures has a good compatibility with the silicon CMOS process. So or let me briefly uh, uh, our project, my project, uh, in this field. So I applied uh, new junctions uh, from features formed across the 3.5 uh, and the silicon heterojunctions junctions uh, for the tunneling FET applications. So uh, this project, uh, the goal of this project is to fabricate a steep slope transistor using 3.5 nanowire silicon heterojunctions. junctions. So uh, uh, in this project, we, uh, I used uh, selective area epitaxy of forming vertical 3.5 nanowires of silicon. So this method uses a partially masked substrate, and uh, we can align the vertical 3.5 nanowires on any substrate, as well as a graphene substrate. Uh, under the specific growth conditions. So uh, as for integration of 3.5 nanowires and silicon, uh, there are many uh, problems uh, in terms of uh, polarity. However, uh, we have overcome this problem and uh, we have successfully integrated the vertical 3.5 nanowires and silicon substrate. And also once we can 
uh, create uh, integrate these vertical 3,5 nanowires and silicon. So these heterojunction provide a unique properties in terms of uh, crystallography and electronic uh, functionalities. So uh, first, uh, uh, this biograph shows a, a number of misfit dislocation with a variation of diameter of heterointerface. So when we grow the indium arsenide nanowires and silicon, so usually the heterointerface has a misfit dislocations. So this periodicity of the misfit dislocations are followed by the lattice mismatch. However, when we go decrease the diameter of the heterointerface, the number of misfit dislocations uh, was decreased. And uh, also, in case of gallium arsenide nanowire and on silicon substrate, we have achieved the coherent growth without misfit dislocations. And also, uh, the nanowire has no defect, such as threatening dislocations or antiphase domain, uh, which is observed that in, on typically 3,5 on silicon heteroepitaxy. Uh, instead, the nanowire has uh, uh, many stacking faults, as shown here. So next, uh, we will utilize these uh, uh, tiny 3,5 nanowires on silicon as a new junction for steep slope transistors. So once we can create a, a very uh, abrupt heterointerface uh, with less uh, misfit dislocations, we can use these heterojunctions for the tunneling FET application. So because uh, this heterojunction provides a unique phenomenon that is a band discontinuity. So this discontinuity is automatically formed without the precise in-situ doping. So for example, when we grow, grow the N-type in the marcenite nanowires on N-type silicon, so IV curves show the shot key properties, uh, also the two electrodes are ohmic contact. So this is because the uh, band diagram forms a uh, uh, this kind, this kind of uh, band discontinuity, like a PN diodes across the heterointerface. And also, when we grow the N type in the marcenite nanowires on P type silicon, uh, the IV curve showed the uh, uh, rectification and the uh, large center tunneling current. So, this is because uh, the band discontinuity has a uh, stacker type to uh, stru heterostore structures across the P-type silicon and the N-type in the marcenite nanowire junction. So detailed uh, diode characteristics shows there uh, are some dependency on the carrier uh, concentration. So we when we increase the uh, carrier concentration of the P-type silicon substrate, the, we can observe a band to band tunneling under forward buyers. And also Zener tunneling uh, was increased under the reverse bias directions. And uh, in, in case of indium gallium arsenide nanowire silicon heterojunction, uh, similar property were observed in this case. And this means uh, tunneling transport can be induced by controlling the position of the Fermi levels in silicon substrate. And also this indicates we can create a uh, 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 we can moderate the tunneling transport by using other uh, three term third terminals. And then uh, we uh, designed the device concepts of tunneling FETs using three five nanowire <coughs> silicon heater junctions. So as shown here, uh, these uh, device structures are based on vertical type, and uh, we will use the uh, three five nanowires to serve as a uh, channel region and the drain, drain region. And the tunneling transport uh, will occur from silicon to uh, uh, 3,5 nanowires. And also, we have already designed uh, the concept on the uh, 3,5 silicon heterojunction based TFET on the silicon 1 or substrate. This architecture uh, will fit to conventional C CMOS platform because we can use a self aligned process by using these architectures. So our final goal of this project is to make these heterojunction type TFET on the silicon platforms. However, we can start uh, the, this vertical type TFET using 3.5 silicon heterojunction. So what you see here is a device process for after the formation of the nanowires, 
uh, gate oxide and gate metals were deposited on the samples. And then by using the polymer resin and the uh, HBAC procedures, we, we made uh, vertical uh, FET structures. And also, uh, we have co already confirmed uh, our uh, gate stacking technologies has a good uh, properties uh, as uh, in terms of uh, MOSFET. So this is our, our indium gallium arsenide nanowire-based FETs. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we can recognize the subthreshold slope was very steep, uh, even if we use a 3,5 MOSFET. And uh, this uh, data evidence our uh, Data stacking technologies has a good properties. And also, uh, furthermore, we have confirmed uh, EOT dependency of the, uh, this subthreshold slope. So this uh, MOSFET has a very low uh, interface state density. Uh, the value was ranged to uh, two, from two to uh, four times 10 to 12 at the room temperatures. So uh, the reason why uh, we can obtain the, such a steeper uh, subthreshold slope and uh, lower DIT uh, across the MOS structures uh, is seems to be a uh, surface surface morphology of the nanowires. So as you can see here, uh, the uh, nanowire structure has a many uh, sorry many stacking folds. Uh, as, in here. So, however, uh, these um, stacking faults uh, provide unique uh, properties uh, in terms of uh, surface morphology. So, as I mentioned uh, earlier, so uh, the channel transport occurred on the one by one or nanowire side walls here. However, uh, this side walls uh, was composed of the 111A and 111B microfacets across the twinning twin planes. So, or, and also uh, during the uh, device process, uh, we treated uh, this uh, side, this surface uh, before ALD process, and the one, this 111B surface was etched off and transferred into the 111A oriented surface. So this means a one bar one O surface of the nanowire has almost 111A surfaces. And also, uh, this 111A surface is chemically stable surface, and uh, there are uh, less gallium oxide. Usually, gallium oxide results in the uh, larger DIT. However, in our case, uh, the uh, gallium ox the suppression of the formation of the gallium oxide uh, results in the lower DIT. That's why we can obtain the lower DIT in our gate stacking technologies. So. Next, we can utilize these uh, convenient process, uh, properties for the TFET. So as you can see here, uh, we used uh, uh, vertical indium arsenide nanowires for TFET ap applications. And uh, also under the reverse bias directions, uh, we observed uh, switching properties uh, with a sub-threshold slope of uh, 160 millivolts over decade. And also recently, we have uh, found that the uh, passivation effect worked, worked well uh, against the uh, indium arsenide silicon heterojunction. So in this case, uh, the, uh, we used the indium aluminium arsenide as a core shell structures. This core shell structure uh, 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 increased the on state current, uh, which is uh, 40 times than that of bare indium arsenide nanowire channels. This is because the enlargement of the captured area and the passivation effect worked in this device. However, uh, we didn't obtain the steeper subthreshold slope uh, below the 60 millivolts of, of a decade. Uh, also, we used the tunneling transport. So according from the theoretical equations, uh, in order to realize steep slope transistor, the gate and the drain source voltage should be biased or gate uh, region channel region and the heter junctions. So in order to do that, uh, we have to decrease our uh, contact resistance and we, while in, uh, we have to increase the heter junction resistance or channel resistance. So uh, first uh, we uh, characterized, uh, 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 sorry, we increased the heter junction resistance by decreasing the nanowire diameters. 
So in this case, nanowire diameter was uh, 30 nanometers. And uh, when we decrease the uh, nanowire diameters, so we can obtain uh, the steep sub-threshold slope. The uh, sub-threshold slope was uh, 21 millivolts over a decade at room temperatures. And the one-off ratio was reached to 10 to 6. And then also we can see that, that there are two slopes. Uh, one is a steeper slope and uh, the other is a larger slopes. So this is because uh, coexistence of a pure tunneling without the defect state levels and the trap assisted uh, with the defect levels. So this data uh, predicts uh, we can obtain a much steeper sub-threshold slope when we uh, achieved uh, coherent rules without misfit dislocation or defect levels. And also our minimum uh, sub-threshold point slope uh, was uh, 12, 12 millivolts over decade in this device. And the next issue uh, is uh, our uh, junction, uh, sorry, ch channel resistance. So usually in case of MOCVD grown indium arsenide has uh, uh, unintentional carbon doping so with the carrier concentration of 10 to 16. So in order to uh, obtain a, a higher channel resistance, we have to compensate this uh, unintentional doping effect. So however, uh, the, uh, it is di very difficult to compensate uh, by using conventional doping technique because uh, in case of uh, such a tiny nanowires, the single uh, counter dopant atoms in indium arsenide nanowire uh, gives a net carrier concentration uh, about uh, uh, 5 times 10 to 17. So this means a conventional doping cannot form intrinsic layers by compensation effect. So that's why uh, we introduced the uh, uh, pulsed doping technique. So the, the, the benefit of this technique is to form uh, intrinsic layer in unintentional doped nanostructures. And we characterized the uh, MOSFET uh, zinc, uh, zinc pulse doping. So from the, uh, this data uh, is taken from the indium gallium arsenide nanowire MOSFET. So we can roughly estimate the carrier concentration from the threshold voltage and uh, built-in potential. And by using the zinc pulsed doping uh, can reduce uh, net carrier concentration of the nanowire channels. And uh, it, uh, they closed, uh, closed to our intrinsic level, intrinsic properties. And also we can utilize these uh, zinc pulsed doping for TFET applications. By using the zinc pulsed doping and uh, using a compensation effect, uh, we can uh, shift the turn on voltage uh, positively uh, while maintaining the steeper sub-threshold slope. However, uh, the on-state current was decreased. Uh, this is because the channel resistance uh, was increased. And also, uh, we have already uh, fabricated the P-channel TFET using indium arsenide nanowire silicon junctions. And uh, uh, we have tried to make another uh, heterojunction using indium gallium arsenide nanowire silicon. And uh, also, in this uh, heterojunction, we have already achieved a steeper sub threshold slope below the 60 millivolts over decade. And also, we characterized uh, a channel length scaling. So when we uh, decrease the channel length to uh, 50 nanometers, uh, we can enhance uh, on-state current, uh, which is uh, 100 times, uh, times higher than that of the longer channels. And also we can, uh, the range of the sub-threshold slope window uh, became more uh, widen uh, in case of the shorter channel lengths. So this uh, means uh, the channel lengths should be close to our tunneling distance across the heterojunctions. So uh, uh, this is our challenges, uh, future challenges in 3.5 silicon junction for steep slope transistor. The first uh, main target is to enhance our own state current while keeping the uh, steeper sub-threshold slope. And also we have to uh, considered uh, the uh, self-aligned process to integrate the P-channel and the N-channel TFET 
on the silicon platforms. So in summary, we have uh, proposed uh, and demonstrated the tunneling FETs using a new uh, 3.5 silicon heterojunctions, and uh, we have shown the key points for obtaining a steeper internal switching for the vertical T-fit. Thank you for your attention. Talk up uh, for questions. And uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, sorry, why did you use silicon and 3.5? Because silicon is direct band gap and indirect band gap and 3.5 direct. So the on current doesn't seem to be high if you use this resolution. Yes, uh, my final goal is to use uh, such a heterojunction from a direct band gap to an uh, indirect band gap. The ideally, ideally the, uh, we should use uh, 3.5 uh, as a, a source region. But uh, in, our, in this presentation, uh, this is uh, just a demonstration, and uh, we can use uh, uh, our stacking technologies against the vertical 3.5 nanowire channels. So, First, I choose this process and uh, this device. Yeah, I, I think the uh, strategy is pretty good because he's going from the valence band of uh, silicon where uh, the wave vector is at the origin of K-space, and he's going to the conduction band of 3.5, which is also at the origin of K-space. So effectively, uh, although the silicon is indirect, when it's silicon uh, tunneling over to any Mars side, it's actually direct, so it's a pretty good choice. I would say. And actually, I, w I want to congratulate you on your results. Uh, very yes. interesting and uh, very um, uh, certainly uh, a lot steeper than uh, 60 millivolts per decade. Yes. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to uh, ask about the mechanism. Uh, it seems like these equations you put on the board suggest that the mechanism is uh, modulating the tunneling distance which uh, performs well, but only at very low currents. Yes. Uh, so do you think uh, that's the case, that the mechanism is uh, modulation of the tunneling distance? Y yes, uh, the modulation of the tunneling distance is very important, and uh, our uh, device structure, maybe the modulation uh, work worked at the heater junction, but uh, uh, in order to uh, prove uh, or bear out, uh, no, no, reveal the detailed mechanism of the transport. Uh, we have to uh, characterize the more detail about right. uh, many devices. Now, uh, because you had uh, many of these vertical wires, are the good results that you presented on a single nanowire? Yes. I see. That's you a very good strategy. Um, and uh, the other question is, what was the secret to uh, growing the nanowires? Uh, I noticed you seem to have oxide openings on the silicon. Yes. Uh, what's the mechanism of growing the nanowire? So uh, the mechanism is basically uh, followed by the uh, faceting growth. Faceting growth, uh, this is a, a kind of a basic crystal uh, crystallography and uh, also uh, in order to align the vertical 3.5 nanowires, we have to form a 111B oriented surface on nonpolar natures. This is a very good, uh, important point. So, to summarize, then the silicon was 111? Yes. So, and uh, you simply grew in oxide openings. And yes. was there uh, any um, uh, metal involved, like gold, to assist the uh, growth? No, uh, this method uh, has no catalyst. No catalyst, yes. wow. Okay, very interesting. Okay, a uh, question from Alan Siba. Maybe you showed this and I didn't see it, but did you show the common source characteristic? I was wondering if you observed the superlinear onset of current in that characteristic. This one? Yeah. This one. Yes. It, which one is this one for? This is is this for the one with the steep slope? Ah uh, no, this is not the steep slope uh, transistors. So did you measure the common source for those? Uh, we didn't bring the data of okay. the current source. I have a similar question. Uh, it's yeah. can can you leave that slide on? Uh, it uh, this is the, the the most remarkable slide. 
Um, w one of the ways to understand the mechanism is instead of seeing a steep response with respect to the gate, yes. is to uh, fix the gate voltage and measure the steep response between the source and the drain. And uh, by any chance, uh, uh, I, th I think some of your other IV curves might have that. Do, do you have the source drain characteristic for the, this very good device? No. Uh, in this uh, steeper uh, slope transistors, uh, the current, uh, so, sorry, uh, output characteristic shows a sublinear dependency uh, of uh, dependency for. Well, maybe the, at the break you can, you can show me uh, the exact data because yeah. it seems to me that it would be very decisive okay. if you see a steep gate response, but you also see a very uh, steep uh, uh, source drain response. Um, and uh, so, so uh, I think both of those yeah. are, would be very desirable. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I didn't. Okay, it. maybe you'll show it later. We, we have to yes. move on to the next talk, okay. but uh, let, let's thank uh, Dr. Tamioka again. Thank you very much.